Hello everyone, my name is Adrian Fernandez from the uh, Texas Instruments Microcontroller team and I'm going to show you how to use an MSP430 F5529 Launchpad with our CC3000 Wi-Fi Booster Pack to pull weather information from openweathermap.org. Um, so I'm just going to plug these two things together and we're going to create a two-chip Wi-Fi enabled solution with our CC3000 and MSP Launchpad. And this particular example will also work on our TVC Cortex ARM M4F launchpad as well. Uh, so same code, same process and procedure, um, and we'll be able to accomplish the exact same thing on both an MSP430 as well as a Tiva launchpad. So I'm just going to plug these two things together here uh, and plug it into my computer over USB. Uh, great. So this is the uh, the code that I've written here, and I'll, I'll very quickly kind of uh, showcase what we're going to try to do. Um, we're going to inter interact with open uh, weathermap.org and that is going to be done using our Wi-Fi library um, that the uh, the Energia community has developed. So really the only two a uh, few lines of code that we have to change to quickly pull that weather information is the uh, Wi-Fi uh, network name in this case that's that's what I have here set up in my location as well as a password and then the uh, desired location that you want to pull that weather information from. Uh, in this case, our code is set up to find uh, temperature and humidity information. Um, so what we're doing is we're actually reaching out to this website. So openweathermap.org, they have a really nice, uh, easy to use API. Um, and by passing in the appropriate uh, HTTP GET request to this website, we will get back an XML file, which our launchpad could then parse through. So in this case, our launch pad is simply parsing for temperature value, and that's how we're able to get how many uh, degrees uh, Fahrenheit, in this case it is at Dallas, Texas. Uh, we can get the humidity information, we can pull pressure value if we want, but in the particular example that we have set up, we're only pulling uh, humidity and temperature information. So this is what Open Weather Map returns back to our launch pad after we do a particular HTTP GET request. Um, and I can show you what that looks like here. So just by scrolling down in my code, uh, we'll see where exactly I'm making that uh, GET request. Okay, here it is. So we're using the client.print command um, to do the GET request. So get weather at your particular location. So that's, this, that's the string that we edited earlier. In this case, it's just simply going to concatenate Dallas, Texas into that area. Um, we want the information to be presented back to the launch pad as an XML, which we can then parse through. Um, and Imperial uh, is the unit, meaning in this case Fahrenheit, because that's what we use here in Texas, or in the US. Um, and that's really the, the main thing here. Uh, once we do that GET request, our launch pad then parses through that information here. Um, so if current dot line ends with temperature value, then we know that the temperature information is about to come in the form of a string. At that point, once we have that string, we convert it to um, integers if we want, and at that point we can do math to the temperature. We can use it for, uh, for, for some logic and comparisons. Um, but as you can see here, whenever um, we read temperature value from the XML, we know to expect this value, and that's exactly what we're getting. So with that, I'm just going to go ahead and hit the uh, download button. It's going to compile our code and load it into our launch pad. And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, click on this so that the hyperterminal will open up immediately once our code is, is finished downloading and compiling here. So once that's uh, compiled and downloaded, almost done here, we should get the, uh, the hyperterminal to pop up for us. And there it is. Then we'll get some uh, diagnostic information back from our launch pad. There we go, we connected to our Wi-Fi network. Now we're trying to make that connection um, to, um, to open weather map. Go ahead and reset. Let me try one more time. Looks like I, I ran into an issue here. So let's go ahead and hit reset, connect over Wi-Fi. At that point, our launch pad should get an IP address and we should be able to, uh, to interact with openweathermap.org. There we go. So that's the IP address of our launch pad. Um, we're making that HTTP request, the API that openweathermap.org for Dallas, Texas. And then we're actually printing out that information. So it's 37 degrees Fahrenheit in Dallas. Um, humidity is 66%.
and this information is current as of this timestamp. Um, and then once we pull all the required information, we disconnect from client. Um, in the code, we actually are um, checking periodically. So within 20, 30 seconds, uh, we should trigger off another request, which is what's happening here. And there you go. We just got that, that, that updated information. Um, and that request interval is uh, here in the code. Um, so you can see this number here is 30,000 milliseconds. So if you want to make the request further apart or a little bit more frequent, we can change it in that number there. Um, and that's it. So this is pretty cool. We're able to pull weather information for any location in the world over Wi-Fi with our launch pad uh, with the help of the Wi-Fi booster pack. Um, and what's great about that is that this allows our launch pad to make more intelligent decisions. So as an example, if I'm creating a, a smart or Wi-Fi connected sprinkler system, uh, the sprinkler that I have set up in my house will basically uh, water the grass every, uh, every Wednesday at 5 a.m. in the morning. Um, but if my launch pad enabled uh, sprinkler system knows that it's going to rain that day, uh, with, the, with the help of, of a website like openweathermap.org, for example, uh, the sprinkler can suddenly become smart enough to say, I probably don't have to water the plants today. I'll just cancel it and wait again till next week. Um, so those are the kinds of possibilities that are possible through um, these, uh, these, these internet uh, connected devices. Um, in addition to that, there's other websites that have open APIs as well. Um, another example is Wolfram Alpha. And I'll show you exactly what that looks like. So this is their uh, website and this is going to return back again another XML file that I can go ahead and parse through. Um, so this is a little bit more robust, but in this case I'm pulling the, uh, the stock price for Texas Instruments. I can also say other questions like what color is the sky. Um, and Wolfram Alpha will return that information back to me in the form of a string. So here you can see the answer is sky blue. So with websites like Open Weather Map, with websites like Wolfram Alpha, our launchpad can ask the cloud a question and get the answer back in the form of a string. Um, Wolfram Alpha is also great for complex math. So I can throw a crazy math equation at Wolfram Alpha um, and actually have that calculations and algorithms happen in the cloud and return it back to my to my launch pad. Um, so that's that's really it. That's just one another example of how to use our launch pad and, and enable it with some Wi-Fi connectivity. So thank you very much. You can find more information on launchpad at ti.com slash launchpad and you can find the latest version of Energia at www.energia.nu. Thanks.